Hey, everybody. My name is Matt Ruby, and I am a comedian and a writer. And I'm Rob Kramer, and I'm a writer and a tech entrepreneur and a bit of a health nut. And I wanted to do a podcast with you, Rob, because we had, you know, a couple great conversations about wellness stuff and spirituality and, you know, what's happening in our culture right now and the way those things get talked about and how there's a lot of BS around it and that it would be nice to hear people who just kind of tell the truth around it without all the pretension. And, uh, you know, that's that's why I first connected with you and wanted to, you know, kind of do this podcast. Yeah. And I wanted to do it as well with you because I think we sort of align on the idea that being health conscious or a health nut or anti-health is kind of like a little bit of the uh, Trump versus the rest of America kind of thing. It's like you either believe it or you don't. You either think it's a bunch of quackery or you don't. And I'd love to see how we can explore like what's hell and what's wellness for lots of people like us. Yeah. And I also think, you know, we come at it from, there's some overlap, but then there's also differences between us. You're LA, I'm New York, you're a veteran, you know, yoga practitioner, and you've been immersed in this world for a long time. I'm a little bit more of a, a dabbler. I mean, I, I would say, you know, my background goes, you know, as far as wellness stuff goes, I, I do love to meditate. I, I'm a big fan of psychedelics. Uh, you know, I like to exercise, I like to eat well, but I'm very much like, uh, I don't know if intimidated is the right word, but a lot of like the Gwyneth Paltrow goop, new agey type wellness stuff is a little bit over the top for me. And I just feel like sometimes I'm being sold a bunch of snake oil. And so that's, that's, uh, for me, this ongoing challenge in, in the wellness space of trying to sort out what is the snake oil and what's like legitimately going to make you healthier. I love that you're a dabbler probably 20, 25 years ago when I started down this path, not only was I a dabbler, I was an OCD dabbler. I was a guru chaser. I used to anything that could bring my mood up or get me healthier I was on it. Like if you could just pitch it to me in 2.3 seconds, I probably would believe you that it had some benefits. Yeah. And the idea for this show, you know, is sort of almost like a Siskel and Ebert, but for wellness, you know, so we're going to be talking about wellness stuff, both things that are in the news, like sort of uh, timeless aspects of it, uh, things in, in the culture uh, and could sort of giving our take on, you know, is, is it something that's uh, healthy and going to make you more uh, aligned or is it something that's a bunch of snake oil or just sort of, you know, the latest uh, fashion trend, but there isn't really substance there. And I think uh, it's going to be an interesting model for us to kind of get to the bottom of some things. And, you know, I think uh, it'll be an interesting journey. I'm excited. Should we jump in? Let's do it. One note for everyone, we are not doctors, it's not medical advice, we're here mostly to entertain you and just to give our perspective on things. Before you do anything serious, please check with a doctor. Our first segment of Hell and Wellness, this is very exciting, juice fasting. I did it once. I did a three-day juice cleanse. It was through a Groupon. I got to admit, I got a Groupon through a, a company called Organic Avenue. And I think we got to go to the patron saint of wellness. I think she's going to come up a lot on this podcast. Gwyneth Paltrow once did a blog post about Organic Avenue. So I'll just read uh, the paragraph that she wrote, which is, I discovered Organic Avenue a few years ago through a girlfriend who was about to do one of their fasts. And I joined her on the five-day program. The result was pretty amazing, and the juices and smoothies, especially the coconut milk and the cacao smoothie, were so delicious that I imbibe them whenever I'm in NYC. They make a cleanse easy with different degrees of gnarliness and home delivery if you're in Manhattan. So Gwyneth's on board, you know, that's a huge, you know, thing in, in this space. Uh, and then, you know, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit of, you know, what was actually being served to me in this cleanse. There was like, you know, alkalizing salts. So it basically like I went and I picked up like three days worth of juice from this store where they press it all. And it was basically like every hour to two hours, I had to take a different shot or drink a juice. There would be like chlorophyll, aloe vera juice, alkalizing salts, green powder, lemon lime shake, young alive green shake, a bunch of stuff. I don't even know what was in it. And I did it for three days. And, uh, you know, I got to say, mostly what it did was make me super hungry. Like, I remember the last day going to bed at like 830, just so I could wake up at 5 a.m. and go get like a bacon, egg and cheese sandwich at the, at the bagel place on my block, just because I was so excited to eat something that was like my main focus. But overall, I don't know if it made me feel any healthier. I didn't really feel better. I mean, like, the, I guess the one thing I will say is during that that week, I got two compliments on my skin, 
and how my skin looked. And I've never in my life otherwise gotten any compliments on my skin. So I guess maybe it made my skin look better for a week, you know, but overall, I didn't feel any better. I was starving. And also, I love food. Eating is one of my favorite things to be doing. And to deprive myself of that for three days in a way that, you know, didn't necessarily have some impact other than maybe, you know, the psychological side of it. And, and the other thing is also I'm a smoothie guy. And I feel like juice is like you're taking out all the fiber from from the fruits and the vegetables and you're leaving that behind and you're just getting the juice. But I feel like that's what smoothies are. You're, you're eating that whole thing. You're getting you're getting all the, the roots in there and all the, the dirt that you need. And, and the juice seems like a little bit clean to me. So from my vantage point, I don't know how I feel about it. How about you, Rob? I, I think I'm right up there with you. However, I did juicing, took it hook, line and sinker about uh, 10 years ago or so. I was convinced that like, this is the best way to ingest your food, right? It's on the run. You can juice all day. I don't know. The juice fast thing was kind of a thing that I was into, but what I was really into was carrot juice. Now here's the thing about carrot juice. There's a lot of shitload of beta carotene in it. And if you carrot juice, Every day, 32 ounces of carrot juice every day, you're going to wake up in about nine to 12 months with orange hands and feet. Like you're just going to walk around looking like Donald Trump's toupee on your hands and your feet. It's just not going to be fun. So one day I wake up, I've been juice fasting on, on carrot juice for probably a year, two years. Thought I felt pretty good until I realized I am so hypoglycemic now. Like this is one of apparently the dangers of of juicing without the fiber, without the smoothies, which which you like, because it's the fiber that really matters. In fact, I think there was this um, Harvard, I remember, um, School of Public Health study back a few years ago that sort of laid it out pretty clearly and said that like people who ate whole fruits enjoyed a reduced risk for type 2 diabetes, while people who actually drank uh, fruit juice at an elevated level were at high, high risk for this disease. So, you know, I'm a little bit suspect now. I stopped carrot juicing. I stopped doing any kind of juice fast. It made you hungry. It just made me dizzy. And I felt like yeah, I was a little getting- weak all the time totally weak and like who wants to go around like being weak in the world yeah i'm already emotionally weak i don't need the physical version too to your point though matt about gwyneth i mean you know what gwyneth says health nuts and health conscious people go for and look there's no doubt that gwyneth paltrow brings up to the forefront lots of interesting things that we would never actually have noticed before but the truth is that there is this in the industry kind of uh, echo chamber that goes on in LA, certainly probably in New York too, where everyone gets really hyped up about the new, new thing, juice fasting being one of them, and nobody questions the science. No one questions whether it is or it isn't good for you. How could it be good for you? I remember when I was growing up, there was a thing called the, uh, the Beverly Hills diet. There was a thing called the grapefruit diet. All you ate are grapefruits. Like, how good can that be? So I don't know. I'm just a little bit hyped up about kind of like I'm a little pissed off, I think, as well, because I was a juice faster and now I feel like I was duped. But, you know, I was younger, a little more naive. And here we are. Well, I I actually did some research. So here's a professor of Boston University, a nutrition and health eating expert. And her name is Joan Sally Blake. And she says, there's no science to suggest that you need to detox your body this way. Your body's smarter than that. You have built in detox organs, the liver and kidney clean up any waste that needs to leave the body. So, you know, trust your body, your liver and your kidney are there already. Maybe they don't need the Kickstarter from uh, from the juice cleanse. The one thing I'll throw in, though, and I think this is true with a lot of this wellness stuff, like the side effect is actually like the main effect, which is it forces you to eat mindfully. It forces you to pay attention to what you're eating. You're not eating any, you know, like, you know, unhealthy stuff. You're not eating a bunch of like uh, fats or, you know, you're, you're, you are eating vegetables and fruit. You're not having corn syrup. You're not having potato chips. So just the mere fact that what you've eliminated from, you know, your normal diet for a lot of people probably is, you know, having a beneficial impact, but it isn't the thing that they're replacing it with that's actually doing it. Totally. And so there's this guy, uh, his name is Robert Lustig. He's this um, pediatric endocrinologist at the University of California in San Francisco. He's like a bit of the authority on this. And he talks about how uh, sugar and the human body um, responds to it. And he basically says that 
whole fruit contains two types of fiber. They're soluble and insoluble. He said together, when chewed and swallowed, form this kind of like this gel that coats the upper part of your digestive system. Mm -hmm. uh, he said it's kind of like a hair catcher placed over a drain, which I don't really like that metaphor, but I get it. He says it's this gel that prevents the sugars in fruit from slipping into your bloodstream and mass and overloading your liver. So instead, the sugars hang together and then they reach your portion of the digestive tract and their benefit. But when you juice, it's going straight to your stomach and doing nothing for you. So it goes into your stomach, you pee it out. What have you done? You've just increased your glycemic levels and you just basically ingested a shit ton of fruit juice and shit ton of sugars without any of the benefits. Totally. And I think a meta thing that will probably come up against a lot here too, is it's just sort of like a fashion trend. You know, I'm a big Michael Pollan fan and he's always talking about how, you know, don't eat any food that your great grandmother wouldn't recognize as food. That's how I feel about diets sometimes, like the Mediterranean diet or something that's been around for, you know, centuries. Like I, I'm a believer in that. The idea that we we just discovered some new way to eat and that this is the best way and or that this is a great thing. I'm going to look at that with a skeptical view because I don't know if we just discovered how to eat. I think probably that's something we've known innately for for uh, centuries now. Exactly. And everything in moderation, including moderation, it's easy to overconsume a juice. But I remember back when I was thinking about, is this really a good thing for me? I was like, if you eat an orange or two oranges, you get pretty full. But if you drink a glass of orange juice, you could actually be drinking the amount of sugar in four to six oranges or more than a Coca-Cola. And you don't feel too good after that. I hear you. All right. Well, to sum up then, I guess maybe I'm going to I'm going to give a wellness to fiber and kidneys and livers. Those guys are all killing it, but juice cleanse, I'm going to call it hell. I I think I'm right there with you. I'm in the hell category and I think uh we all better just sort of take a little vacation from the juice fasting. So I love my standing desk. I actually, I've hacked together a standing desk. So what it, what's a standing desk? Well, it's any a desk that enables you to work and stand. I mean, it's a pretty, pretty simple concept. You could buy a standing desk for $1,000, or you could actually put a stack of books on a counter or on a table or on a desk, and you could create it the height that you need to stand up and work. I mean, here's the thing. People sit too fucking much. It's bad for our health. In fact, people who sit every day have an increased risk of diabetes and heart disease and early death, believe it or not. And so sitting all the time, it burns fewer calories and lots of studies have linked it to uh, weight gain and obesity. So look, I don't have a weight gain or obesity problem, but I find that when I stand and work, not for too long periods of time, then I get a little tired that I just feel more energetic. I feel more alert. Rob, would you go to that next level, the treadmill desk? The treadmill desk is a little bit sort of for me in dangerous territory. The treadmill desk feels like if you're going to do the treadmill and exercise, why don't you stop working and go exercise? I don't like the combo. I don't like it. I also have a, I have a sit-stand desk. Uh, which I'm technically not sure if that qualifies as the same. It's got a little button, so it raises and lowers. I used to work at a tech company and got it as a work from home kind of bonus thing. I would probably not have bought it on my own. But yeah, and then so it's sort of like with the push of a button, my desk can rise and then I can stand and you know have all my laptop goodness going. And then I push a button and then I'm back down and I'm sitting down again. And uh, I got to say that I feel like it's, uh, it's a good thing. I'll, I'll tell you what, one of my favorite stories about ergonomic position. Uh, which is uh, someone asking like an expert on on it, like, what's the best way to be working? Should you be sitting? Should you be standing? Should you be on one of those medicine balls? Should you be on one of those chairs where your knees are bent back? Should you have a treadmill desk? And the answer that this expert gave was the best position to be in is something different than you were in a half hour ago. Interesting. And I love that answer. 
Because to me, that's like a life philosophy bullet coming at you right there of like, there isn't just one right way to be. The answer is to be evolving and changing and not stuck in place and not not think you've got the perfect solution that you just stick with that and don't do anything else. You, you got to stretch. You got to hit, do different workouts, go from different angles, you know, use your use your brain that way too. I just think it, to me, it was like one of those sort of like seemingly uh, minor statements that stuck with me in, uh, in a lifetime kind of way. Just to overuse my over use sort of cheap advice everything in moderation including moderation mix it up sometime like you're saying just mix it up too much of anything is just not a good thing stand sit sit it's like the it's like the intermittent fasting thing eat don't eat eat don't eat sounds like my jewish mother eat don't eat eat she makes me eat but standing i like standing desks yeah i'm gonna go ahead uh given the standing desk i'm gonna call it wellness uh, it's it's a well thing. It's it's helping us. And, you know, really what's getting at is like, what are you doing spending all day looking at a computer screen? Come on, at least stand up. My God. Love it. I'm, I'm right there with you. We are in the wellness category for standing desks. Go out, run. Don't walk. Get yourself a standing desk. Or hack one together like you did. I feel like, you know, a lot of people think you need the fancy sit stand ones. You know what? Half the time I'm too lazy to even push the button. I just wind up working at a table in my home that's higher and I just stand there. So like, you don't have to like spend lots of money to do this. Just, just stop sitting in the same spot for eight hours a day. And just one last thing I want to say about this, just contrary to what we're talking about, Matt, you're in New York. Jeremiah True. is in, where are you, Jeremiah? He's silently in Austin, Texas. It's our producer. He's, he's killing it. He's killing it. And I'm in LA and I got a feeling based on what I'm seeing that we're all sitting down right now. Oh. For this one, I might I might try a standing episode coming up. Watch out. Maybe maybe my ideas are just going to flow in a way that's overwhelming. So be careful. There you go. Now we're going to talk about frequency healing, which I, I don't actually have any idea what it is, but on the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Denise Richards' husband has a clinic or something where he practices this frequency healing. Uh, it says he's curing people of all kinds of diseases that uh, now, you know, corporations of the government are, are following him. Uh, you know what? I think probably the best way to get into this is to just play this clip of this guy from The Real Housewives talking about his frequency healing practice. And uh, maybe we'll just uh, stop it and, and offer some commentary along the way. Everything you've been taught about how disease process and stuff works is not true. All right, stop it there. So I already have issue with this guy. I don't like when people think talking really slowly makes what they're saying really important. Soda you know, the, voce, soda voce style. Yeah, well, that, I think that's, uh, is that soft or slow? What does soda, soda voce mean? Soda voce is like uh, kind of guttural, soda voce soft. And gotcha, a yeah, bit. yeah, right. And he, you can already tell he's super pretentious and going to like lay on some bullshit right now. And this is like a dinner party on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, which I don't watch, but it's everything that you think it's going to be as soon as you see it. So uh, let's keep going. Let's hear what he's got to say next to, to, about his frequency medicine. I have to be careful. Say what? Explain. Age of 12, I was living next to the largest nuclear facility in North America. I watched everybody die of cancer. All right, stop it again. So first first of all, he's living, he makes it sound almost like he's a superhero, like he was bit by a radioactive spider or something that gave him like the answers to all our our problems in the universe. And I, I, again, the, like, I don't know, he sounds like every cokehead I've seen at like an after hours party in like Manhattan at 3 a.m. Like this doesn't sound like someone who's healthy to me. He sounds like he's like barely there mentally. So like I, I'm worried about everything that's happening right now from a, a wellness perspective. So bad setup. Let's hear his, uh, his, his elixir therapy here. We could split an atom with sound and cause a nuclear explosion. Not true. But okay. If you look at an atom, there's lots of space, right? Electron, proton, neutron, whatever. So there's space, lots of space. space. There's space. There's empty space, space, right? 99.9% is space, but it's oscillating at a frequency 
that appears to be real in our reality. All right, stop it again. What what the hell is this guy talking about? You, Wait, are we are we listening? Are we listening to a physicist or a friggin' Malibu like reality show actor? Like, is this dude is this dude like up for the next Nobel Prize of bullshit? Yeah, I mean, he's he's like an actor who I think finally landed a role that he can play, which is just I mean. I don't know what what is he the the atom was split by sound and it's a nuclear weapon and there's lots of space and it's it's just like it's tough when you hear someone who you can clearly tell is an idiot talking as if they're one of the most intelligent people that you've ever been around you're like I really don't think this is true. So is this guy I think he's Malibu guy right and he's like got this he- healing wellness center like yeah. is this guy actually out there in LA healing people because if he oh, is in Malibu, which is not far from where i live i'm gonna try to steer off the pch and get up as far away from that motherfucker as i can uh, he's about to tell you about it so let, let's keep going on the clip yeah traditional isn't traditional it's allopathic and allopathic it means alternative medicine look it up look it's it up all a measurement of the electromagnetic spectrum frequency. I break down stuff so you can all heal you. I don't heal anybody, by the way. I remove blocks, discord, information. My husband. Stop it again. It's almost like a Trump press conference or something where it just starts rolling off the rails and the person who doesn't know what they're talking about just has to keep lying even more bizarrely in order to cover up for the lie that just came before it. It's uh, it's I'm I'm impressed by how little he knows and how confident he sounds about it. Yeah, it's unbelievable. First of all, I have a feeling he has a problem healing himself because he sounds fucking half cock drunk. I I wish, you know, Sarah Cooper, the 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 Trump impersonator, I yeah. wish she could lip sync this guy and do a whole new mm. sort of level of content with him. It's a good idea. But- what is this guy talking about? Let's keep going. He's healing people, Rob. Just got to give him a chance to explain. My husband's been involved in fusion energy for 30 years. And I know a lot about it. And I am trying to wrap my brain around what Aaron is uh, saying. Okay, so can we stop that for a second, too? That's one of the other housewives. And she's like, my husband has been practicing fusion energy for 30 years. I'm like, well, that doesn't sound like you're an expert. But 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 by the way, I, I've never, this is the first time ever that I've actually agreed with a real housewife. I mean, there you I go. Would, there you go. First forever. What is is fusion energy a real thing? You know about this? Uh isn't that like an electromagnetic splitting of an atom high frequency open the chakra? Okay, I didn't know it was thing? some health thing though. Is there some oh. health thing about it? Oh yeah, dude, like you're you're not Oh, don't into stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Come on. All right, but keep playing this guy's clip because I want to get this my favorite part is at the end. Surgery. How is that possible? No surgeries. I was just saying without surgery. Zero. This party for me started awkward and then it got bizarre and then it got more bizarre. There's cancer in every one of you right now. Cancer happens all the time. Cuckoo, cuckoo. If we end up- I was about to say, wait. Wait wait for it though. Cancer, are you sure it's bad? Do you even feel safe? We already have people following us. I have people following me all the time. Okay, so stop right there. Hold on. So oh, wait, I, I think I know he, where he's headed. He has people following him all the time because he cures so many people that the pharmaceutical companies who profit from all these illnesses are keeping an eye on him. Ah, he's going to fuck up pharmaceutical capitalism. Yeah. He's going he's gonna to put, he's going to put Bayer and all these other companies out of business because he's figured this shit out. Yeah, like, why 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 else would he be being followed, Rob? Well, I mean, y- y- there's cancer in everything. Right. Well, I, I, the cancer, well, let, let's keep playing this because the, you'd be surprised at what cancer can accomplish. Hmm. What kind of people? You have people following why you? Why do you have people following you? Aaron has a job where people get tremendous results and sometimes certain organizations don't like to see those results because they make a lot of money otherwise and there's times we're following their profits. I, There's that weird car. I know. This is them being the followed, car. supposedly. Why? Yes. Because it's protecting you of infection. Your immune system did not respond to it, and you would have died in 12 hours. Really? That's what you have cancer. All right, wait, we got to stop this. 
So, I mean, whoa, that, whoa, he's whoa. saying the reason you have cancer is because otherwise something was going to kill you within 12 hours and cancer is your body's way of defending itself. See, see, I actually thought I was so confused by this, this, this clip that I thought that the reason you got cancer is because people follow you. And if people follow you, you get cancer. Like I, I was so think just listening to this guy talk might give you cancer. I mean, it's, I, de it's, it's definitely making me feel like my brain is rotting a little bit. So, so the question is how many people who watch this guy on TV actually believe this shit? Like, I think that it's the QAnons and the conspiracy theories and the five G people. And like they all, it's like, this is like their voice. I feel like we don't get to see it on TV a lot, but this is what it sounds like when people are like, just sort of making it up because they got some feelings about stuff and they think the scientists are lying to them. And it's, it's sort of like this free for all of information now, which I guess it's brought on by how much like the pharmaceutical companies do lie to us and, and mess with us. And then people kind of are sensing, you know what, something is bullshit here. There is something wrong. They're not telling me the truth. But then you have quacks like this guy coming along who like clearly like, God help you if you're putting your your life and health in this human being's hands. Wow. This is stunning. I need to watch more comedic Real Housewives with Aaron Fipers or whatever the frig his name is. Uh, this is pretty amazing. Like, I, I love that this is a new discovery. Like, I don't even know what to call it. Can we even label this hell or wellness? I, I'm going to say frequency medicine has the frequency of hell. I'm telling you, if there are degrees of hell, this one is as hot as it gets. Yeah, it's, that's the, the last circle of hell is this, this guy telling you about his healing practice. <laughs> Bye-bye, Aaron. Try not to bump into you next time I'm in Malibu. Thanks for listening to Hell and Wellness. I'm Rob Kramer. And I'm Matt Ruby. You can subscribe to the show wherever you listen to podcasts. And please, if you would, rate us and review us in Apple Podcasts. And we appreciate you listening. See you next time. Podcast is produced by Stereoactive Media.